This is one of the most controversial sports cars that you can buy today, which sucks because it's one of the best sports cars under $100,000. But of course, nothing's perfect, so we're gonna hit the highlights, both good and bad. Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt. This is the 2023 Toyota Supra, and that number is important because every year since the Supra's debuted in 2020, it's gotten a significant or less significant improvement. And originally it was debuted with 335 horsepower, the next year they bumped the power up to the full 382, and then they've made some suspension adjustments, and now for 2023 it comes with the transmission that it should have come with from the jump, the manual. But anyway, we're gonna cover the best and the rest, starting with the rest. First thing that we'll address is the BMW thing. And we have to get this out of the way at the top because I know that's what half the comments are gonna be on this video. Yes, it's a BMW chassis. Yes, it's a BMW engine. And yes, it's a BMW interior. And some people will write off this Supra for those reasons exclusively. But the reality is that this car is still one of the most proficient sports cars that I get in and test each year. It's just good. So the only reason I put it on the negative side of this video is because if you're gonna get one of these, just be prepared for a bunch of irrelevant drivel to come your way. And number two is the technology. And this is just kind of what happens when you buy into another platform and operating system from a manufacturer that's gonna be phasing that software and that tech stack out. This Supra does still run on BMW's iDrive 7, which is a brilliant platform, by the way. You still get Apple CarPlay, although you don't get Android Auto. You've got reverse cameras, but no 360, and you've got a head-up display. But if you're looking for the latest and greatest that BMW has to offer, you won't get iDrive 8 here. And again, I don't have an issue at all with this iDrive 7 system, although I do not love that this is just seemingly extremely tacked onto the dashboard, but this is still a very good system. It's just not the latest and the greatest from BMW. And next is either that I'm blind or stupid because I can't find any button anywhere on the back of this car that will open the rear hatch. It's not in the lights, it's not under this lip here, it's not in the bumper. I just don't think it has a way to open the, the trunk without going to the key or the inside driver's door. And number four, I'll admit, maybe it's a bit of a nitpick and it's specific to me, but I have heard other people complain about it, and it's the steering wheel. It's just a little too thin. The BMW M Sport steering wheel is the best, the girthiest steering wheel, and the rest of the interior here is BMW, except for the thing that you interact with all the time. So I guess I would just like a little thicker rimming on the steering wheel here. And fifth and finally is that there is still buffeting from the windows. There's something going on with the wing mirror and the way that the window is shaped that you cannot drive this car over 40 miles an hour with the windows down without getting some serious reverb and buffeting in the cabin. I mean, it's four model years of this car, Toyota. Just fix it from the factory. I shouldn't have to go to the aftermarket. I don't care how cheap the part is to fix it. I shouldn't have to go to the aftermarket to drive my brand new car over 40 miles an hour with the windows down. Fix it. Number one is the stick. Now obviously we have to talk about this right away because it's the big thing for this year. Personally, I think we should have gotten this transmission right away when the car dropped in 2020, but I guess at least I'm happy that it's here now. It's actually a pretty good story when you hear it. BMW doesn't have a stick in their lineup that's attached to the B58. They don't have it in their lineup globally at all. So what Toyota had to do was they went to Europe and they took the stick out of the Z4, the base Z4, I think it's like the 20 or 28 or 30 or whatever it is. But they did that and then they adapted it, reinforced it and reprogrammed it to fit this B58 engine. BMW hasn't done this at all. So Toyota is actually the first one to offer a stick to BMW's own uh, powertrain. So it's BMW hardware with Toyota tuning and programming. And it's awesome. First, it's a no cost option as it should be. Second, the pedal box is perfect for heel and toe. Third, if you don't want to heel and toe on your own, it's really, really great and it's auto rev matching. I think it's Toyota's IMT system, but it's really good and really sharp. Fourth, I like that the clutch engagement is nice and low at the bottom of the pedal, unlike that Nissan Z's gearbox where first and second gear and I were not friends. Fifth, the shift action is actually pretty solid. It's a short and notchy throw and it feels rewarding. It feels better than any BMW manual transmission that I've tested. And sixth, I like that the cluster will show you what gear you're in before you've let the clutch out, before you've engaged the clutch. So if you're gonna miss a shift or if you've accidentally slotted into the wrong gear, you'll know before you 
release the clutch. And seventh, just a fun fact, but the manual saves 22 pounds from the automatic car. And lastly, you can only get this thing in the stick with the three liter straight six. You can't get it on the two liter turbo, not on the base. Overall, I really like the gearbox and I feel like this is the product that the Supra should be. I feel more in control of the car. I have a better understanding of where the limits are and how the car is going to react to certain inputs. I just, I love the new manual. It's a great addition. And number two is the seats themselves. Now, I've had some back pain basically all winter from probably snowboarding and falling on my ass, but these seats have been fantastic. Now, getting in and out of the car hasn't been the most fun this week, but these seats, once you're in here, are fantastic. I've got great thigh support. The bolsters hug my legs without pushing them together. And then it, I'm about 6'1", 195 pounds, and the bolstering that I get up my lower back perfectly hugs me again without squeezing and then as we get up to like my traps and up to my shoulder areas the seat tapers off i'm not pinched and it's just it's a really nice seat of course they're heated they're not cooled but it's just a really nice place to sit whether you're pushing it or if you just want to relax and number three is the engine it's still the b58 from bmw under the hood here but the more cars that we test with this engine the more and more i'm impressed by it it's super quick, it's really torquey, it pulls nice and clean, and it's shockingly efficient. It makes 382 horsepower on paper, which is more like 420, and 369 pound-feet. Zero to 60 in this manual equipped car is it's about 4.2, but if you go with the automatic, it's about 3.9. And it'll get close to 30 mpg on the highway. Plus, it's super robust and you can add a bunch of power to this thing without really worrying too much about reliability through tunes and some simple bolt-ons. This, I think, will be the next generation LS swap. Number four is the dynamics. Again, if you're riding this car off simply because it's a BMW, it's like being mad that your Toyota is really a Porsche or a McLaren. You get a brilliant and dynamic chassis. You get one of the best six cylinders that money can buy today. You get excellent damping and suspension sophistication and tuning, and your steering is great. I love the athletic feel that I get from the front end, especially wearing these Michelin Super Sport tires. Toyota did do some reprogramming to the diff for this manual, and it does make the car feel a lot more predictable. Last year's car had a tendency to bite you if you got on power a little too aggressively coming out of a corner and the diff would kind of seem to lock and send the back end around on you. This steps out much more predictably and much more organically. This is such a rewarding car to drive as you explore the limit and test yourself as a driver. And also, it's proper fast. <laughs> And number five is the looks. I've said it before and I'll say it again, this is a fantastic looking car. For 2023, you get the new Stratosphere blue paint, which looks good, but I'll still take my Supra in yellow. You still get the long hood with the long running lights. You still get fake vents and I still don't care about that. You do get a new design for your 19 inch forged wheels and they're pretty cool, but I do like last year's better. You still get carbon fiber wing mirrors, you still get the double bubble roof, and you get some of the more aggressively flared rear hips out there, and I absolutely love that. They're so dramatic. And then around back you get the really aggressive sculpted duck bill, which looks excellent, and the taillights fit the personality of the car. And you get the F1 style reverse light in your huge black diffuser sandwiched between your dual exhaust. That aggressive rear diffuser tied in with the side skirts, all of the fake venting, and the front splitter make this thing look super dramatic and really aggressive. The only thing that I would change is if I could just drop the ride height about half an inch. Of course, then you worry about scraping, but it would look badass. And then six, and finally, we talk about this cabin here. Sure, it's not BMW's latest and greatest, but when you compare this interior to what you get on the Subaru-based GR86, or even the true Toyota GR Corolla, I can't understand why people are complaining about the BMW-ness here. The interior design, materials, and build here are so far above anything Toyota would have done themselves. The carbon fiber you get on your center console looks fantastic. The aluminum rimming the dash makes it look expensive, and the leather on the seats is really supple. I mean, it's just really nice, and it comes together to look and feel way more expensive than it otherwise would have. So that's it. That's the best and the rest for the new 2023 Toyota Supra. This is, I have to say, in manual form, the best Supra that they've given us, which is a shame that it waited for the fourth model year to give us the best version of the car. I get what they were trying to do with making the car a little bit better each year, but all the attention and the hype around the Supra, it's gone now. And I know, I know some people will still care, and it's great that the manual's here, and I really love it, and it's a huge compliment to the car, but I just kind of feel like it's a shame that we didn't get it at first, and it would have been a bigger success for Toyota if we got the full power and the manual transmission from the jump. 
this is just an excellent sports car. Maybe it's a little overpriced as it's approaching $60,000 as tested with Destination, but damn, is it good. Oh, my ass crack isn't out. Oh, it totally is. Ass cracks in 4K, that's what downshift is about.